Hi, my name is Melissa van Dijk and in this video we are going to have a closer look at the Ordinary Vitamin C products, what you can and cannot combine in the same routine. And I'm also going to specifically demonstrate in example routines so that you also can visually see it, what you should avoid using in the same routine, but also what can be very effective and what you can combine in the different routines to also target specific skin concerns. And hopefully by the end of the video, you also have a better understanding of the different vitamin C products from the ordinary line so that you also, in case you have them at home, know exactly how you can also place them in your skincare routine to also get most out of it. Now, first of all, I do want to mention that I'm going to specifically talk about the ordinary products only so that you also have a better understanding of it, generally speaking. And so I want to get started with what you should not combine in the same routine, which is also do not combine the ordinary vitamin C products with any of the ordinary niacinamide products which also includes the niacinamide serum as well as the niacinamide powder and any of the ordinary vitamin C products. You can also see the list down below. So please do not use them in the same routine. They may neutralize each other, which means that when applying them in the same routine and in case they would also neutralize each other, you won't see any effect. And it also may be disappointing because you're not getting the expected improvements. And so therefore, I recommend keeping them separate. Now, I know that this topic is very controversial, but since we are mainly talking about the ordinary products in general, they also recommend to also avoid using them in the same routine, which may not be beneficial when using them together. And therefore, I recommend that you're also going to stick with what they recommend, since those are the people that are formulating the products. So this may be different with any other brands that are having niacinamide or vitamin C products, but with the ordinary, this is the case, please do not use them in the same routine. You may want to use niacinamide in the morning and your vitamin C product in the evening, that's totally fine, so that you also will get most out of those two products specifically, and that you also will see improvements over time. And then there's also one other um, topic that's also really important to avoid in the same routine, which is also do not use the ordinary vitamin C, which is the pure and ethylated forms of vitamin C, with any of the ordinary peptides. Again, if you have any of the ordinary peptides at home, as well as any of the ordinary pure ethylated forms of vitamin C products at home, keep them separate. Again, you may want to use, for example, Buffett in the morning and your pure ethylated form of vitamin C in the evening to make sure that you also will get most out of it. And you can also see the list again down below what those products specifically are. So if you can't see your product on the list, please do not use them in the same routine. Keep them separate. Now I want to go over a specific topic that's not completely forbidden to use together, but it's more like to avoid skin irritation. Since not everyone has the same skin tolerance, which means that some people are a little bit more sensitive, whereas other ones have a little bit more of a resistant skin, and some people can tolerate anything on their skin without any reaction, whereas others are really like mindful about what they are using because their skin is like easily irritated. And so to avoid this from happening, it is also not recommended to use the ordinary pure or ethylated forms of a vitamin C with any of the ordinary acids. Now I'm talking about the Levon exfoliants. Now, first of all, this also may include the ordinary glycolic acid, salicylic acid, mandelic acid, or lactic acid. Please do not use them with any of the pure and ethylated forms of vitamin C. Some people may tolerate it, but I wouldn't recommend it, especially if you're new to those two products. You may want to use them at alternate nights if you want to use both in your evening skincare routine to also avoid skin irritation. So it's just the, well, like basically what I wanted to tell you with it is that you want to get most out of those two products, but you also do not want to harm your skin. So therefore, I recommend keeping them separate. You may want to use them either at alternate nights that let's say Monday you're going to use glycolic acid, on Tuesday you're going to use your pure ethylated forms of vitamin C, on Wednesday glycolic acid again, and so on and so on. 
or you may can also go ahead and use your vitamin C product in the morning and your uh, leave on exfoliant in the evening. That's also one way on how you could do it to avoid skin irritation. Now, not only does this play a big role when it comes to their leave on exfoliant, but also when it comes to their exfoliating mask, which also includes the ordinary peeling solution as well as the salicylic acid mask. Now, when using the peeling solution or the salicylic acid mask, please do not use any of the pure or affiliated forms of vitamin C products from the ordinary. Since again, you have exfoliated the skin, your skin is already a bit more sensitive since you basically just have already shed off that skin cells and your skin is a little bit more sensitive in general. So if you would apply a vitamin C product on top, again, pure or affiliated forms of vitamin C, it may irritate the skin. It may not be the case for everyone, but this could happen. So to also take care of your skin, you may want to avoid this combination. Now I also want to talk about that you should avoid using the ordinary pure forms of vitamin C and ethylated forms of vitamin C with the ordinary granactive retinoids or retinols. Now, not only can already um, the retinoids or retinols irritate your skin, depending also on your skin tolerance, some experience some side effects when using those products, others don't even experience anything at all. But when also including the pure ethylated form of vitamin C in the same routine when using one of the retinoids or retinols, this may irritate the skin even further. So especially if you're new to them, I recommend using them at alternate times, maybe both in the PM, but you're going to switch from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday and Friday, etc. So that you have a nice balance going on, but you're never using them in the same routine. Or you can use, for example, your pure acidated form of vitamin C in the morning and your retinoid in the evening. That's something that's fine too, as long as you're not using them together. Maybe if your skin is more resistant or you have a, like a well-tolerated skin, this combination could work. If you have already tried it, it may work for you, go with it. However, if you are new to those two products, I recommend using them in separate routines, just in case to avoid any skin irritation. And now lastly, I also want to talk about the ordinary antioxidant. To be more specific about the EUK134. Please do not use it in the same routine when using a pure ethylated form of vitamin C. Again, this combination may be too strong for your skin and it also can lead up to skin irritation. So one way on how you could avoid it is when using them in different routines. You're using one in the morning and the other one in the evening to have the perfect balance, to still have most out of both products or like the main ingredients that can uh, change something within your skin, but at the same time you're not using them together, which also means that you're also avoiding any skin irritation. So it's not wrong to combine them in the same routine, but it may be too strong for your skin. So therefore, it's best to also use them in separate routines. It doesn't have to be at alternate nights or alternate days. It just can be in different routines, one in the morning, the other one in the evening. That's it. Now you may wonder what can you use and if you can use certain products, how can I combine them? And also especially with the ordinary vitamin C derivatives in general, because I have left them out for certain products because for those it also is a little bit different. And I wanna get into, but I wanna get started with the easiest one first, which is also the ordinary hydrators and oils. You can use any of the ordinary hydrators and oils when also using the ordinary vitamin C products, which can be the pure ethylated forms of vitamin C as well as with the vitamin C derivatives. You're fine to use them also in the same routine. Or if you like to, you can also use one in the morning and one in the evening. That's not wrong as well. It just depends on what you prefer and how many products you want to include in your routine. Now here's an example routine for dark spots. And I basically also use one of the hydrators. I picked the Ordinary Marine Hyaluronics. But at the same time, I also picked the Ordinary Ascorbic Acid and Alpha Albutin, which can help with dark spots. And then you can also finish off your routine with an oil or moisturizer. And also maybe when using it in the morning, don't forget your sunscreen. 
So this could be an effective routine for dark spots. But if you're doing this routine in the morning, please don't forget your sunscreen, since your sunscreen can also protect your skin from making it any worse if you're suffering already from hyperpigmentation in general. So this is an example routine that can be very effective. Now another routine that I want to get into, which is also under the category of the ordinary more molecules. This also includes the ordinary alpha butene as well as the caffeine solution. And I want to give you a great example of what this routine could look like, as well as choosing a different vitamin C product. Now I want to get into this in just a moment. Now here you can also see what this routine can do for you. First of all, if you want to include the caffeine solution, this is going to be your first serum after you have cleansed or used also maybe a toner in between or exfoliant in between. So basically you're going to use it after your cleanser. This is going to be your first serum that you put under the eyes. Then you can also move on to the ordinary alpha routine, which also targets dark spots and hyperpigmentation. And then as your last product, when it comes to the ordinary products, you may also want to use the ordinary vitamin C suspension 30% in silicone. And then of course, if you're going to do this routine in the morning, don't forget your sunscreen, but there's no sunscreen needed in the evening. So this could also be an effective routine. This could be an AM or PM routine. Whatever you also want to target, make sure that it's specific to your skin concerns. Now next up would be the ordinary antioxidants, which you can also use in the same routine when using the ordinary vitamin C products, but this only includes pycnogenol as well as resveratrol and ferulic acid. And if you want to use them in the same routine, this could also be an example routine, which also targets fine lines and wrinkles. You would, for example, after you have cleansed your face, use the ordinary ethylated ascorbic acid solution, which is an anhydrous solution. And then after that, you can also use the ordinary pycnogenol, which is an anhydrous solution as well. Now, in this case, it is also important to go with their formulation. So since the ordinary has different vitamin C formulations, which go from the serum into the suspension, you also have to understand how you can also layer them correctly. And that's why I'm giving you now different examples with different vitamin C products so that you also can see after what step you also can use it. However, if you want to know more about the different formulations and how you can also properly uh, set up a skincare routine to make sure that, you also, that it also feels good on the skin, I have a video for you also in the top right corner where I'm going over those specific details as well as how you can pick the right products for your skin concerns. So if you're interested, don't forget to check it out in the top right corner. Since now it also becomes really important to know how you can set up your routine depending also on what vitamin C product you have at home. Now I also want to talk about the vitamin C derivatives as well as if you can also use it with the retinoids or retinols as well as also with the leave-on exfoliants or maybe also the masks and also the peptides. Since the vitamin C derivatives are a little bit different than the pure and ethylated forms of vitamin C. And therefore I also created some specific routines to give you also great examples so that you also have a better understanding of it. Now let's have a closer look at the ordinary vitamin C derivatives, which you can see right here. And this is as of today, the ordinary vitamin C derivatives. And here's also what an example routine could look like when also using those specifically also with some, well, like for example, the retinoids or retinols. Since you're fine to also use them in the same routine. Those are not pure ethylated forms of vitamin C, which may cause skin irritation. However, with the vitamin C derivatives, it is a little bit different. And here you can also see what a routine would look like, which mainly also targets or like that you're getting those anti-aging benefits. So you would, for example, use the ordinary ascorbyl glucoside solution. This is a vitamin C derivative. And you can also, for example, combine it with the ordinary granactive retinoid in emulsion. And then if you still should feel the need, you always can add a moisturizer, but mainly with an anhydrous solution, it also feels already nice on the skin. So this could be a very effective, but also simple skincare routine. 
Now I want to go over another example where you can also see that the vitamin C derivative formulation is differently and therefore you also would layer them differently. So again, this is mainly targeting the anti-aging benefits. So you have this time the guanactive retinoid 2% in emulsion or 1 in squalane, that's totally fine, would be your first dome. And then you could use one of the vitamin C derivatives afterwards, which is the tetraisopalmitate solution, since this is also an oil. So it is important that you also understand the different formulations to also make sure that you can layer them in the correct order when also setting up your skin routine. But this is also a great example on how you can also combine them. And then here you also have another example, which is also using the ordinary magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, which is currently out of stock. Um, but anyway, it still matters because when it's back in stock, it is also important to understand how we should layer them. So if you want to use your retinoid, you would use the magnesium ascorbyl phosphate solution or like emulsion afterwards since it has like a cream like texture so you would go from the thinnest texture to the thickest texture so therefore it's going to be applied afterwards so this is really important to understand when looking at the different vitamin c products from the ordinary since they are um, not only serums in general but they also have different formulations that the order of application matters depending also on what you want to use before it as well as afterwards now I also want to share with you that you can use the vitamin C derivatives with any of the ordinary direct acids, which also mainly again includes the leave-on exfoliators, in this case like lycolic acid, salicylic acid, mandelic acid or lactic acid, and a routine also could look like this. You wash your face, you use your leave-on exfoliant and then use any of the vitamin C derivatives afterwards. This would be mainly an, a, like a PM skincare routine, however if you would use it in the AM don't forget your sunscreen to also protect your skin um, from like, not only the sun but also because you're using a leave-on exfoliant. So this is really important that you can combine the vitamin C derivatives with any of the ordinary AHAs or BHA leave-on exfoliators. And the same also goes if you want to include, for example, the Ordinary Azelaic Acid Suspension, which is also a product that's listed under the direct acids, but Azelaic Acid is a little bit special. However, you still can go ahead and use any of the vitamin C derivatives and also use them in the same routine when using the Ordinary Azelaic Acid Suspension. If those two products are targeting your skin concerns, using them in the combination is also great. And don't forget your sunscreen in the morning. Now I also want to talk about the vitamin C derivatives as well as the peptides, since you can use them in the same routine. So don't confuse the pure acylated forms of vitamin C from the ordinary with the vitamin C derivatives. They are different. Um, at some aspect with niacinamide, you should not use any of the vitamin C products that the ordinary has with niacinamide. But when it comes to certain uh, like categories with the direct acids or peptides, you can use the vitamin C derivatives with those as well. That's not a problem. And you can also see an example routine which also would work very well. And it also would target mainly uh, fine lines and wrinkles that are also related to any, getting any anti-aging benefits. So using one of those combinations could also work amazingly. So now that you have seen what you cannot mix with the ordinary vitamin C products as well as what you can combine with the ordinary vitamin C products, I do hope that I now could also help you out to also have a better understanding of the different combinations and that you also now can go ahead, use your vitamin C product and also use it in the correct order in your skincare routine. Now, if you want to know more about the different formulations and how you can also layer the products correctly in your skincare routine, I have a beginner's guide for you as well, which I can link at the end of this video, as well as if you also want to see how I'm applying the different vitamin C products on my face, I also have a video for you as well when it comes to the application at, after this video as well. So I do hope that you also enjoyed it, that it also was helpful. If you did like this video, please also don't forget to give the thumbs up as well as share it. And I will see you soon in the next one. Happy skin caring. Bye.